Good evening, welcome to our Monday Thursday evening worship. I'm the Reverend Paul, I'm beginning our service and then I'm going to hand over to the Reverend Mike. I'm going to be looking at Peter on Monday Thursday, mainly using John's Gospel, John 13, but obviously touching on the other Gospels as well. And I'm really asking just a number of questions. So here's my Monday Thursday reflection uh, through Peter. I wonder if you've ever fallen asleep while praying. Ever been so tired you couldn't keep your eyes open? Most of us can probably relate. And yet, when we look at Peter on that third Monday Thursday, it seems the worst thing ever. But then, when we think about the day that Peter had had, life seemed unusual at best. I wonder if you've ever had those moments when Jesus surprises you. Ever had a moment when God does something you didn't expect? Like getting up from the table and washing your feet. I wonder what emotions went through Peter in, in, in that short space of time. Realising that he should serve Jesus, getting up to do the same, wanting to wash Jesus' feet, eager to serve, eager to please. And being told he needed to have his own feet washed to be part of what Jesus was doing. Offering his whole self, do my hands and my head as well. I wonder what it was like being told to serve others. Was it easy? Is it easy? I wonder what Peter felt like when he learned that one of his group of friends would betray Jesus. The relief that it wasn't him, the horror when Judas was revealed, confusion, anger, that that can't be right. Have you ever felt those feelings with God? Confusion, anger, that can't be right. I wonder how easy you find it to love. I wonder what our lives would look like if we truly loved one another. Have you had one of those all-in moments with God? That total rush of passion, that abandon to God. Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Or have you had that wrestling match? Torn between giving your all to God and the fear of what he might just ask you to do. Peter was all-in. I will lay down my life for you. Have you ever been told you would fail? the hurt, the disillusionment. I wonder if you've ever tried to prove someone wrong, only to prove them correct. I wonder if you've ever found the emotions of a situation just so exhausting, so exhausting that you want to sit down or lie down even, or just shut your eyes just for a moment. I wonder if you've ever fallen asleep while praying. Ever been so tired that you couldn't keep your eyes open? And then when you do open them, things just go wrong. Badly, badly wrong. I wonder how Peter felt seeing Jesus get arrested. I wonder if he had any energy left for what was to come. Have you ever been so tired that you just kept your mouth shut? Have you ever been so weighed down with everything that you made the wrong decision? We don't know what was going on in Peter's mind that night. We don't know the turmoil. We don't know the anguish. But we do know that the cock crowed as Jesus said it would. We do know that Jesus called Peter to be the rock on which he would build his church. We know that Jesus can take the broken, the exhausted, the, the fearful, the passionate, the tired, the confused. We know that Jesus takes them and loves them and uses them for his glory. I wonder if you've ever fallen asleep while praying. Ever been so tired that you couldn't keep your eyes open? I wonder if you can relate to Peter.
I'm going to hand over now to Mike and he's going to conclude our service. that speak no sacrifice hands that flung stars into space to cruel male surrender this is our God the servant's king he calls us now learn how to serve and in our lives and drawn near each other's needs to prefer for it is Christ with serve Thank you very much, Paul, for that reflection on Peter and, of course, uh, what it means for our own lives as well. We're coming towards the end of our service now, and I guess we're just going to focus upon items that were there as Jesus finished his meal. Bread and wine, things left over from a meal together. What we call the Last Supper. A meeting of Jesus and his disciples as he gave them a very important instruction, and that was 
to remember him. And he used these ordinary things of bread and wine so that his disciples could remember him. And of course, we continue to do this today as Christians as we celebrate communion. And St. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, his first letter, chapter 11, says this. He says, the tradition which I handed on to you came to me from the Lord himself. That the Lord Jesus on the night of his arrest took bread and after giving thanks to God he broke it and said this is my body which is given for you do this as a memorial of me in the same way he took the cup and he said this cup is the new covenant sealed with my blood Wherever you drink it, do this, Jesus said, as a memorial of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And with that, the meal ended, and with that, the disciples dispersed. And with that, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to watch and wait, to agonise and to pray. I'll leave you with these words this evening. When the disciples had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus prayed to the Father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. He said to his disciples, how is it that you were not able to keep watch with me for one hour? The hour has come for me, the Son of Man, to be handed over to the power of sinful people. Come, let us go. Christ was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And so this evening, as we finish our Monday Thursday service, let us watch and wait, and may we go in peace and love.